is provided by freeconferencecall.com. Please enter your access code followed by the pound sign. You enter 955967. If this is correct, press 1. To re-enter your access code, press 2. There is one other participant in this conference. Please announce yourself. Idikai Marisier, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Let's begin to pray. Dear Father, we thank you for another opportunity you've granted to us, a privilege to come into your presence, to worship you, and to move into the next year. We come in power because you are the God of power. With you, all things are possible. We receive mighty good things this day because you have made us to believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is that Devinda on the line? Yes. Okay. I'm going to tell you something really quickly. How miracle is done. Probably you have been told that when you come to God and you ask him for something, he give it to you immediately. I have taught you very well that there are times you ask God for something is immediately granted on the spot. There are times that you ask God for something is immediately granted the same day. There are times you ask God for something is granted to you the next day or three days, sometimes a month. There are also certain big things that you ask God. It's granted in years. For example, God said to Abraham, I'm going to give you a son. It took 13 years for the promise God made him to come to pass. If, you, if it was you, you would have walked away. You see, that is why Abraham is called the father of faith because he believed that what God said would come to pass. If I tell you something, that this is what God says about you. And you don't believe it. You will never receive it. Unbelief is not a part of Christianity. Not believing what the Bible says. That you can have something. If the Bible says that you can have something, then it means you can have it. But if you believe that you cannot have it, then you will never have it. It's as simple as that. If you believe that you can build a house and you walk towards it, you will be able. If you believe that this is what I can do, this is what I can do, you will achieve everything. But when you begin to limit yourself, that is where God himself will withdraw. God loves somebody who believes him, who believes that he is capable of doing that. I worked in a hospital as a chaplain one time and I discovered something that is just so amazing. I discovered that everyone, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. A conference is on, we are having a conference right now. I discover that when people uh, come to the hospital and they come with bitterness, they are angry with the doctors, with the social workers, with the nurses, they, they come filled with bitterness and anger about their situation. Many a time those people died in that hospital. They never made it. Their body couldn't heal. And I discovered another kind of people. They came in expecting a cure. They came in believing that what the doctors are going to do, the prayers of the chaplains, the ministry of the social workers, the works of the nurses is going to be of help to them. And so they come in expecting those people, they made quick, quick, rapid progress. They healed quickly and they went home quickly. 
I observed that, and that was amazing that I was able to see that. That is exactly what happened to us when we come to the presence of the living God. Those who come in already with fear, with bitterness, with anger, with anxiety, with panic, with unbelief, they get nothing. And those who come in believing, they are serious about it. They believe that they can get anything they want if they ask God for it. Sooner or later, they get it. Sooner or later, they get it. So if you don't believe that you're going to get something from God, why follow him? It's just like marrying a husband or marrying a wife. If you don't believe in that person, everything about that package called a man given to you or you choose for yourself, why go ahead with the marriage? Or same thing with the woman. Why want that person? That is the same thing with God. If you don't believe the totality of who God is, that he exists, he's capable of giving you what you want, why follow him? Because there's nothing that pains God. There's nothing that makes God to walk away. Like when, when you are trying to believe in him, yet you don't believe in him. And yet people walk to the, to the, to the other camp, and they go to the shrine, and they go to the voodoo places, they go believing. They never doubt those things. And it works for them. Why? Because they believe that it will work for them. And that is why those who practice those things have figures and statues and paintings of all those gods and goddesses and everything. So that you can at least see something. In Christianity, we don't have those things. Why? Because we do not want you to worship an idol. We want you to focus on God. Now let me read to you from, uh, let me begin to read to you the, the teaching for this morning. Genesis. Genesis chapter 12. I'm going to read to you verse 2. Verse number 2. This is what God is telling our, uh, our spiritual father. Um, Abraham, this is what God is telling him. We have dealt with verse number one during the three o'clock uh, three o'clock session remember that we are having a marathon prayer line and the title is take over 2014 if you are not willing to take over the year other people will take it over for you and will be managing it for you and that is what we are doing what we are doing is to take over this year take over 2014 so that nobody take it over for us. I will encourage you to read the New Year message from my ministry that I sent out. It's, it's packed with a lot of stuff. A few insights here and there for you. But sometime tonight, during the uh, 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock service tonight, tonight, I am going to begin to expose there will be prophetic utterances that I will be I will be making some revelations will be will be released tonight the Kaimeri ministry uh, conference call yep Yes, Lee from Australia, how are you? You read, De you read Deuteronomy chapter 28. Okay, let's do something really quick. Open, open it up, open it up. Let me summarize it for you. Open it up. Okay. I'll wait.
Okay. If you cannot find it, do you have your Bible with you right there, right now? Okay. Open it. Open it to anywhere. Place your right hand on the Bible. You did? Okay, I want you to say this in the name of Jesus. Let every power of God in this book enter into my life. Let all of the blessings of God in this book come upon me now. Good. Let all the favors of God in this book of life come upon me now. In 2014, I receive and I have with me and I retain with me all the blessings that has been spoken in this book they are now mine I am the head I will never be the tail I move forward only. I cannot move backward. I have moved backward enough and enough is enough. I have been sick enough of sickness. I have been in poverty. I don't want it no more. I can never be broke anymore from this death forward. I can never be ruled by devils. No more, no more, no more. I am in charge of my territory. And everything that is in my country bow down before me. God has called me to be a ruler. I am a leader. In the name of Jesus. I conquer 2014. I will not allow anybody to manage this year for me. I am in charge of 2014. From January 1st to December 31st. And every good thing come to me. And every good connections are mine. Angels have been assigned into my life now. This is my portion. Because God has given this to me. In Jesus name. Amen. Okay. Lee, Lee, call me back uh, sometime either today or tomorrow and um and let me let me discuss with you um next next year that we we have already entered it supernaturally and uh, we'll enter it uh, according to uh 
uh, the calendar sometime tonight. I would like you to call me. Let's let's talk about uh, my coming to Australia to come and minister in Australia. And um, uh, if I'm going to be staying uh, uh, with you and so on. Um, so try and give me a ring when you have the time so that we can discuss how things are so that I can ask you some questions about Australia and how things are. How is everything in Australia now? You guys having good weather? <laughs> oh, it's a little bit hot. You guys are the ones enjoying. We are in the cold. Uh, we are we are in the cold region here, <laughs> and you guys, it is hot down there. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay, let me continue with the yeah, let me continue with the conference call. You will follow that ad on justin.tv forward slash the Kai Mary or uh you'll see it immediately. The program finished, it goes straight to YouTube and everyone can see it. Thank you, thank you, Lee. Take care. Okay, bye bye. Okay, bye-bye. Now, let me continue to read to you uh, from, um, from uh, Genesis chapter, 20, uh, chapter 12, verse 2. Here is the next thing God said to Abraham. I will make you into a great nation. Ha, 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 ha. This is incredible. You see, when God said to you, move away, move into, and you move away, and you move into, something else is going to follow obedience. God has spoken to you to move away into 2014. There are people God is telling you now, leave them alone. Family members, friends, all kinds of people God is telling you, move away, move away, move away, move away. If you obey God and you move into the territory that God has located for your provision, for your promotion, for everything, what I call the happy package solution. Then, the next thing is what we are reading. Just one second. Idikai Mary Ministries, this is our um, our end of year conference. How can I help you? Okay, wait, wait, wait. He said he got it? No, he didn't. He just, he just checked. Uh, he didn't get there yet. So he wasn't holding his thing. Okay. Okay, okay. You on your way to your job? I'm, I'm here. I'm here in St. Thomas at the moment. Yeah. Okay, you are St. Thomas, okay. St. Thomas is on the on the on the US Virgin Island or is it on the British Virgin yeah, Island? Yeah, it's Okay, okay. I pray that God will protect you and promote you and um and you and your wife should find some time to give me a call, okay? Okay, baby, later on tonight when I get back home. Right, and tell Devon Jr., tell him that I wish him a happy new year also, okay? Okay, yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. So how did you send the package? Did you send it to USPS or how did you send it? Uh, through the United States Postal Service. Just, just regular mail. Yes, just regular mail, but they told me that it will be there in two, three days or something like that. So, and it's taking like two weeks or so, and they have not sent it back. And so, it will be there. It should be there. Okay, okay. If it, because I have the tracking on it, so I'm gonna find. I'm gonna find. Nobody can. Nobody can take it. Yeah, because my ministry logo is on it. Okay, okay. 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 Bye, bye. Oh yeah, because I wanted, I want your son to and your wife to get that. You you got your own already, so I want uh, a situation that since they come all the way from Grenada to see you, 
that they will also be able to enjoy and uh, and know that we are all there for them also. Okay, bye bye. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. When there is an obedience, then something must happen. God will never say to you do something without him making you to profit. It was the same God that told me two months ago or a month ago. He told he, he said this to me. I've never I've never read it in any book. He said, Do you know why I ask human beings to worship me? I said, Tell me. I'm listening. He said, so that they may profit. I said, Are you serious? He said, Yes. He said, Do you know the reason why I ask them to pray? I said, no. I said, is it, so that, is it not so that they can worship you? And he said, so that they can profit. That's the summary of it. Profit is the reason for everything. Is the reason for everything. God calls you so that you can profit from him and he can profit from you. That's the reason. He wants to promote you. He wants to protect you. He wants to give you privileges. He wants to give you, he's already given you, he's already given you the privilege and opportunity to be a world ruler. There's nothing bad about being a little king on the earth. There's nothing bad about that. And look at what he said to Abraham when Abraham made the move. Listen to this. I will make you into a great nation. You see, everything that God made that is alive, he does something that is beautiful about it. I'm very excited this morning. Whether it be a tree, whether it be a an ant, whether it be uh, a buffalo, whether it be anything that has life, no matter what form of life, he did something spectacular. He put a seed into them. Whether it's male or female, there is a seed. It's not just a seed to make a baby. That's not it. I'm also talking about another kind of seed. He put into you the seed of imagination and thought, thoughts. He puts into you the seed of intelligence. He also put into you the seed of spirit. I love this. He put into you the seed of spirit. He put within your spirit, within your body, and within your soul, your mind processes. He put seeds in all. You are, you, are, you are a bag of seed. What I mean by that, bag of talents, creativity, productivity into you. It's not just one thing you are capable of doing very well. There are many things you are capable of doing very well. If you develop them, if you recognize them, your job is to recognize that you are a seed, a seed carrier. Why did God put talents and giftedness as seed in people? Is because that is the only thing He's capable of blessing in you. The only thing that God is going to bless is not you, but the seed in you. I'm not talking about the children. That's a different ball game altogether. God will bless what will bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God will bless what will bless you. Who is on the line? Who who on the line today? Uh Maria, are you on the line? Yes. Maria?
Is that ah, okay, Maria? Okay, that is the lady from the Sudan. Okay, that is it. The lady from Edmonds. Are you there, Washington? You are not there. Okay, Marlene is not there. Not yeah. there. Okay, I think I think I wore them off yesterday. <laughs> they were with me throughout the night. Who? Uh -huh. Los Angeles. Okay, Los Angeles. I want you to put that thing down. Write it down and, and email it to me. God will bless what will bless you. I want you to write that statement. That is a key right there that God is giving me. God will bless what will bless you. You, you have, you have in you what will bless you. Don't walk about looking for people to come and bless you. There are seeds in you already. Some of you, God has given you a mouth. And you can talk a lot. If you start talking here, the night will come and the morning will come. You are still talking. You love to talk. Why don't you become a broadcaster? An advertiser? And begin to advertise for big company and say, God, you've given me a big basket mouth. My mouth is big. I can talk. I can quarrel. I can fight with my mouth. Can you bless it? So that instead of me using it to sit down and be gossiping people, I begin to use it to be a broadcaster. I begin to use it to, to, to bless people. I begin to use it to be an advertiser. And when you release one big mouth on a product, everybody goes and buy it. And the company gave you a check of one million dollars. <laughs> Why don't you start thinking about such a thing? That's a seed. If you love to talk, you enjoy talking a lot. You love to quarrel with your mouth, not with your hand. You love to quarrel. Every little thing you quarrel, you fight. Things that other people like myself will ignore and keep moving. Hey, not you. You will never ignore it. Oh. Hey. That person called me some bad name. He said, I'm stupid. Who do you think you are? You're calling me stupid. You take that person up. And the person turn around and also look at you and know that, hey, there is also a fight in you. You can also fight with your face. The person take off and run. If you have big mouth, ask God to open door. Doors that he opened for big mouth people. So that you can earn millions so that I will never be broke in the ministry. Because when you send me one tithe from your big mouth program, hey, that's a lot of money for me. If you are somebody that loves to sow, you enjoy sewing. You can why don't you start thinking about and you can draw new fashion, new dresses? Why don't you start thinking about doing something about it? You can cook when you cook here. Nobody want to nobody wanna go back home. Everybody want to stay there. They will eat and eat and eat because the food is so yummy. Because you can cook. Why don't you start thinking about a restaurant and later from a restaurant to a five-star hotel? If you are good at giving people compliments, why not begin to think about big job with airlines, big job in Big companies where you are the one that is the receptionist, you know how to greet people, you know how to... There are many things you can do. You are a bag of seed. You contain plenty of seeds. There is a lot you can do. So I want you to think about that. God wants to bless your gift, not you. So that your gift can take care of you. So if you are thinking of God coming to bless you, you sit there and wait forever. Doris, you know what, what the people from Africa, they say, you go see, they see, don't look. You go see, don't they, they look until Andrew no go come back. Yes, so you will sit there and be waiting. The camels will never come home. The cows will never come home. Ask God to begin to bless what will bless you. Let God bless what will bless you. And the rest will be history. For example, I'm praying for God to bless the ministry. 
so that the ministry can bless me. I'm asking God to bless my gift, to bless my office, so that my gifts and my office will bless me. I'm asking God to, to, to release his spirit seven times more than I've ever had in 2014. Because my gifts are not enough. But when presents come upon my gift, ah, the rest is always history. Like the lady that called me today from Uganda, just this morning, shortly before I came on there, and she began to talk, and I told her, did you remember that? I told her, I said, do you know that when you were leaving Uganda to come to Canada, did you know that there was somebody in your family that went to native doctors, to, witch, to the witches, to the witch doctors, to do something for you? She said, oh my gosh, that is true. See, that's what I'm talking about. Nothing is hidden. As I begin to pray with you and begin to minister to you, God will begin to reveal to me what the real issues are. Why you can never be, why you cannot stay married. Why people always have children outside wedlock in your family. Why somebody is married to your sister. Never build a house for your sister, but go and get a mistress and build a house for the mistress. Things like that. You begin, you begin to, you begin to find solution. I begin to find God begin to use me to find solution for those things. Because God has blessed my giftedness. He has blessed the seed He has put in me, and now that seed can begin to become service for other people, and then the reward comes. If the person is good, the person will compensate me. The first thing God wants to do for you is through the seed in you, the talent and giftedness in you, He wants to make you a great nation. A great nation will be something like this. Let me use Walmart or Burger King or McDonald's or Jesse Penny or CS or Dillard or Mercy, all those conglomerate or Bank of America, all those big, big corporations. You see, they are not just one, co one company in one location. They spread themselves, they open themselves and have their branches everywhere. That is what we call a great nation. For Bank of America, it will be a great nation of banking. For Walmart, it will be a great nation of, um, of a big retail store where you can buy everything you want in one place. That's a nation because it is all over, all over. God wants your gift and talent to become a nation. Why, you, why, does, why did he use the word nation? Because he wants it to spread. He wants people to buy it from everywhere. He wants people to need your service from everywhere. And also, God can use you to become a nation anywhere. In reality, you can build an empire. Like Doris, empire of uh, Doris property investment, something, something. You guys are always coming up with big names, you know. Doris, real, real tour, something, something. Uh, Cheferrell's real tour, something, something. Something. And then everywhere you go in the nation, you find it. Every city is there. You go to the nations of the world. You go to India, is there. You go to Australia, is there. You go to New Zealand, is there. You go to Italy, Portugal, Spain, Norway, Holland, Sweden, Denmark, Switzerland. It's all there. England, everywhere. You become an empire. You built an empire. The first thing God wants to do with you next year, 2014, is to build a nation out of you. God wants to make you not just a nation, but a great nation. He wants to build an empire out of you through the seed in you. If you do not employ your seed, God is not going to bless it. 
and so you will have no blessing. The seed in you is your product. God wants you to sell something. So in 2014, begin to think about what you have that you can sell. So we are not talking about you going to sell your body. We are not talking of you going to sell your body because that one is a different ball game altogether. We are talking of you selling your talents and giftedness. That is what will become a nation, what will spread everywhere. That's just the way it is. And also, God then will begin to bless your real children, whether you are adopted or you are natural or your spiritual children. You begin to multiply them in every nation of the earth and you become a nation. A great one for that matter. And that's what I'm asking God. So begin to pray that through your children, God will raise president through your spiritual adopted or biological children. God will raise up leaders, mighty leaders of the earth to rule big corporations. To become leaders of nations of the earth. I want you to begin, to begin to pray that kind of prayer. I want you this morning to tell God, make me a great nation. Begin to pray. What I've been speaking for the past few minutes, I want you to begin to talk to God about it and say to God, I want you to make me a great nation. I want you to make me a great nation. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Like, Mar like Maria, you told me, that you are you you've been thinking about starting a restaurant what stops you this year start a restaurant no matter how small some people start restaurants in their own kitchen and they tell their friends that they have started something and during lunch hour people people drive it people drive and stop by and or you take that food the day you are off you take you take the food you've cooked you go to their offices and give to them and you take five dollars here ten dollars here ten, 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 ten. by the time you know it at the end of the day You've made a thousand dollars from your kitchen. You are waiting until there is a loan or friends come together to come and raise money for you and they go and hire a place for you to start something. Are you serious? Many of them, envy and hatred will not allow them and jealousy will not allow them to give you a dime. So if you are waiting for them to come and do something for you, they are not coming. Start from somewhere. Start where you are. And then from your kitchen, you, you, the money comes and then you move and get a place and begin to cook officially out there and then get it registered. It's like some people, they want to start a church and they immediately go and get a building and then they go and start something. And then there's nobody there. And then when the thing collapsed, they think God wasn't there. But the thing is, you could have started it in your own house. You could have started something small. From there, you move it to, as you see God blesses it, then you move it to the outside. You know, that's how it's supposed to be. Ibibio says that AC for Ikboko for Ko for Kana or case record before MNA Warama. Doris, is that not true? Oh, oh. Oh, You begin the dance inside the house before you begin to dance it out there. You begin to learn how to manage money inside the house before you learn how to manage it out there. So I want you to lift up your voice and begin to pray. Father, I begin to pray. Make me a great nation. Father, make my gift and talent a great nation. I want you to begin to pray. Ask God to make your gift. Your gift is the blessing that will bless you. Tell God to bless the gift. Tell God to bless the gift so that the gift will bless you. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Sondo brand tuko shakia brando biante montra kundo brando kasha tumbrindo mukaranto biasaki ya mukende briantu mundi kanda braka jikere kende brando nombro ti karasite mukrombundo briati sekunda in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I begin to bless your gift. I begin to bless that which is in you so that that which is blessed in you will begin to bless you. <laughs> I'm loving this prayer. This is powerful. This is powerful. I bless that is in you that the Lord has blessed and deposited in you so that it will begin to bless you in 2014. You can you cannot have you cannot have all the goodies inside you and still be hungry and lack money and be broke and be sick. Every good thing that the Lord has deposited inside you, I bless them this day and let them begin to bless you in Jesus' mighty name. I command your seed to be recognized. Opportunities to open now. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. This is powerful. 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 Your gift, your talent are the seeds that are going to work for you during 2014. Father, begin to employ them. Begin to employ them in where they need to be employed so that they begin to to, to manufacture stuff. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Grace, are you on this line today this morning? Okay. You are not you are not on the line. I know Marlene is not on the line this morning. <laughs> they were all tired. All right. I will see you guys by 12 o'clock, uh, 12 o'clock Central Time, which is 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. And then I will see you guys again by 3 in the afternoon, 3 o'clock uh, Central, which is 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Then I will see you guys again by 6, which is, which is 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Then we will meet again by 9 o'clock, which is 10 o'clock, which is 10 o'clock um, uh, 10 o'clock um, Eastern time. I might tweak the one of 9 and 10 uh, because I want people in the East Coast and the, and the, and the, and the um, I don't know. But I will love those in the East Coast and those in the, in the, in the Midwest and those in the Pacific, in the Pacific, um, in the past in the in the pacific time zone i want i want a service that we can have either um i am thinking of moving the service of nine o'clock this evening the one of nine o'clock this evening to move it to ten o'clock which will be which will be eleven o'clock um eleven o'clock eastern i want a situation that we can pray till twelve o'clock uh, uh twelve o'clock um uh, central time everybody can come together we can pray until that time you know that everybody is, is seeing the new year differently it, it, it come to these people one hour ahead these people two hours before these people two hours behind these people so it just keep it, it keep coming and and uh, it, it's just the way life is just that that just tells you that 
we are in the same world, but we are seeing things differently. We enter into the same thing, but from different zones and from different angles and so on. But it's just the same thing. For example, like myself, when it is 12 o'clock here today, today being um, 31st, I will start the celebration immediately. I finish the service, the, 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 the marathon prayer line of 12 o'clock this afternoon. I will go into my private uh, chapel to 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 do some 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 entrance and so on and so forth. It it will be just be amazing things. So I look forward to 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 seeing you by uh, by twelve uh, this afternoon, twelve noon, which is one p.m. Eastern. Please, I look forward to see to see you there. Um, let's let's pay the price for power let's pay the price to have power because that's all that matters it's not about the world it's about the power that we are getting and the power of god is at work within us so that by the time you enter 2014 you'll be seeing clearly your spiritual senses are heightened you, you will have what i call heightened spiritual senses hallelujah <laughs> thank you jesus Remember also that if God has blessed you to go to my site and contribute to my ministry so that we'll be able to run quickly and do certain things with speed in 2014. And also remember, for those of you who will need uh, the uh, Idikai Mary's ministry to help you during Easter, for an Easter basket, begin now to write to us to tell us about it so that we can, we can put you in our little budget and see what we can send to you. So let's, let's start taking care of those things ahead of time. In all, I want to thank you for coming to join me this morning. If any of you have a prayer request, please do call me. I will be in the chapel today and, um, and also be doing some office work, fasting at the same time, and also ministering, and also be praying, doing this uh, marathon prayer line takeover 2014. God bless you. When once each of the session is over, next one hour you will see the video um, i have something that is doing it really fast and once we are done it doesn't take up to 30 minutes one hour the video is on so you can start watching immediately if you if you missed it god be with you bye bye amanda oh gillian how are you I'm doing great. You are able to wake up early. Wow. I thought all the I I thought one that you had at seven when I got online everybody was gone. Oh yeah. <laughs> I thought that all the I thought that all the all the bunnies are still sleeping. I thought all the baby bunnies were still sleeping. I didn't know one of them was awake already. <laughs> That's yeah, something. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Yep. Seven yeah. So welcome to my world. You see, you see what I do? When it when uh -huh. you see you see what I do. That's it. <laughs>